वेलकम बैक क्लास सिक्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड माय सोशल साइंस क्लास अर्लियर आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द डिविजन्स ऑफ सोशल साइंस वेर एन आई हैड बिगान विद द हिस्ट्री लेसन सो हियर आई एम विद द सेकेंड चैप्टर इन हिस्ट्री that is on the trail of the earliest people here in this chapter we would be discussing about how the people in the past that is prehistoric prehistoric here means what before history was written before we could get any of the historical accounts so people used to live in caves people used to uh, survive on hunting they were food gatherers they used to look for their food in the roots they used to dig out the roots of the plants they used to eat that they did not know how to cook the periods were paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic now paleolithic age that was old stone age we are in this clipping you can see that people are moving around with spears which shows that they are going to look for food they will be hunting around they would be hunting they did not know much about the language they used pictographic scripts now archaeologists call the earliest period the paleolithic paleolithic age paleolithic period this comes from two words paleo that means stone Paleolithic period extends from two million years ago to about twelve thousand years ago. Lithos. That means stage or age. Period during which early humans began to control fire and develop language. That was Mesolithic period. Now, Paleolithic period. If I get back to that, here. Now, in Paleolithic period, people used to have stones. They used to convert those stones into tools. There are certain methods. pressure flaking stone on stone which we will be reading later on and they used to chisel them into fine pieces of spears or tools or in any way equipments which they required that was it then mesolithic period that is middle ages paleolithic and mesolithic mesolithic they got to know about fire it may be a matter of chance when they happen to uh, i mean get to know what is fire as we assume that may be possible while rubbing two stones together there would have been a spark and due to dry leaves fallen around it must have caught fire when it was burning and they realized that no it is something which is warm so if it is warm this can be used as to prevent ourselves from cold this can also be used for heating so this led to cooking they were scared of wild animals and as i told you earlier they used to live in caves 
so they when they discovered fire they started burning it outside in the mouth of the cave so as to protect themselves and at the same time to keep warm now the period beginning about 12000 years ago till about 10000 years ago is called the mesolithic or middle stone age stone tools found during this period are generally tiny and are called microliths they are stuck to the handles of bone or wood to make tools so megaliths and microliths megaliths are those pieces mega means large large pieces of stone and small pieces of stone are microliths third is neolithic age neolithic age where man started settling down earlier he was a wanderer so when he started settling down what could have been a reason that he got to know about farming and domestication of animals again the question arises how he got to know farming then again we start assuming as historians suggest that maybe by a matter of chance somebody must have seen a sapling growing somewhere it would have been just due to they must have eaten some fruit seeds would have fallen down and with the passage of time they grew into a sapling this is how they got to know about farming the period from about 10000 years ago is known as neolithic this age is generally characterized by the development of settled agriculture and the use of tools and weapons made of polished stone settled agriculture suggests that they started cultivation they started farming they had those megaliths and microliths they started chiseling them into tools and agricultural equipments and those equipments were used for farming or growing crops digging sowing plowing so somehow and with that they had animals when they used to move around from one place to another they were surviving on dairy products they were surviving on animal flesh and these animals they had domesticated and they used to live with them as well so somehow we say that development or advancement was such where they started farming and rearing of animals they also learned about the sources of irrigation water because till now when they had nothing to cultivate or they did not know anything about it it was not required but when they started farming and cultivation they had to look for water to provide it for the crop they were dependent only on the monsoons and rain here they started worshiping nature gods lord indra for rain rain god but at the same time when there was development taking place they had also developed they had also um got to know about a wheel the wheel which was used as potter's wheel because when they started um preparing food but how to prepare where to prepare so they started making pots from that potter's wheel and the same wheel when they had to move from one place to another they use it as a cart wheel and later on it was also used for generating water that is persian wheel 
so somehow development was taking place during neolithic period and we can very well say this was the most advanced period of history now hunters gatherers got to be known by the way they got their food they hunted wild animals caught fish and birds gathered fruits roots nuts seeds leaves stalks and eggs it is likely that they used tool of stone wood and bone for hunting and gathering food now reasons why hunter gatherers moved from place to place so very true because if they stayed at one place for a long period of time they would have eaten up all the available plant and animal resources so animals move from place to place in search of prey therefore those who hunted them had to follow their movements prey the animals which they hunted and when these animals move from one place to another they had to follow them maybe through hideouts but they had to follow them because they had to hunt them for their food now plants and trees bear fruits in different seasons so people had to move from season to season in search of different kinds of fruits as we all know plants and trees are totally dependent on the seasons one plant may be bearing fruit in one season another may be bearing fruit in another season because of their differences because of their climatic differences the survival so people had to keep changing their habitats people and plants and animals need water to supply uh, their survival was completely dependent upon availability of food and water so people living on the banks would have had to go in search of water during the dry seasons in geography you would be studying about perennial rivers or those rivers which do not get dry and they provide water round the year but here as for a matter of fact when these people were living on the banks of the river and if at all they did not get water in a particular season their plants may not survive animals would not live anymore so they need water to survive so hence what during the dry seasons these people they had to move from one place to another now many sites were located near sources of water such as rivers and lakes as so stone tools were important people tried to find places where good quality stone was easily available so everything was dependent upon the availability of water stone then cultivable uh, soil which they were not very well aware of then places where stone was found and where people made tools were also given the name as factory sites usually we find blocks of stone tools that were made and perhaps discarded because they were not perfect and chips of waste stone left behind at these sites so now sometimes people lived here for longer spells of time and these sites got to be known as habitation come factory sites so with this i bring an end to this chapter first module yes of course this chapter would be continued in my second module wherein i would be telling about the methods of making stone tools and also wherein we look into and we see that yes these people who were surviving on say as natural resources yes these natural resources were there on which they were totally dependent
so as i told you right now habitation factory sites habit factory come habitation sites so wherein they were working on those stone they were chiseling those stones into fine pieces of tools making of stone tools then uh, we would be discussing about methods of making stone tools how the changing environment had affected that then about certain sites where do we find them like hunski uh, let's see um just um, for now you just go through this module and also read from your ncrt textbook history textbook yes of course and if you come across any difficult words which you are unable to decipher or understand so you please underline them highlight i'm not giving you any assignment and this is equal to assignment of course so that's it for now thank you and stay safe